Hello, I'm Sam Gary, and in this video, we look at how to streamline projects using Microsoft's Power Apps. So, a little bit about myself. So, I'm a Power Platform pre sales consultant at Valto, and there's a few photos on the screen about what I like to do outside of work, uh, such as golf, skiing, uh, more recently, running and hiking. We actually did the Three Peaks Challenge in May. Uh, and raised over £5,000 for charity. And I think the plan is to do the Welsh 3000s next year, which will be quite exciting. Uh, so uh, I'm sure we'll keep you up to date on that. And there's also a QR code at the bottom left where you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I post quite a bit of content around Power Platform and it'd be good to hear from yourselves just in terms of what you're using it for. Uh, maybe you're sort of quite far along in that journey or, or maybe you're at the start and want to maybe know a bit more about how they can start to help and I suppose automate and streamline quite a bit of your current processes. So yeah, please feel free to connect and let's have a chat. So key takeaways for this video is looking at how to build a simple project management tool in model driven apps. We'll be looking at the stage and gate process and also approval workflows as part of that stage and gate process. And we'll be touching on how you can start to then track all your timesheets against those projects as well. So if I just flick over to my other screen. So this is uh, our model driven app. So what we've done with something like this is where you've got Dynamics 365 project operations, which can be quite expensive. So what we've done is try to replicate that using model driven apps, which is a much cheaper license. So for someone to have access to a model driven app, they would need uh, a per app plan license, which is £4.10 uh, per user per month uh, on the Microsoft website. And um, so again, running costs, obviously much, much cheaper. So for something like this, you've obviously got your project area here. We can then go in and create a new project. So you can see here now we've got all these tables and fields which we can customize. So all this can be built to how you need it to and what information you need to capture. But for us, we've got things like uh, the name, of, you know, the customer, the type of project. You've got things like links to the quotes, maybe the specification documents. And then we've got things like efforts. So how many hours, for example, that we've built uh, or build, sorry, versus how many hours we may be spent on the actual project. Uh, you've got timelines. So again, if you're logging, logging communication, for example, we can track any emails or call sent to the customer, any feedback, you know, that, that sort of thing. And then we've got things like sales owner, uh, who the project manager is, uh, what team it belongs to. So again, all that information we can then start to capture. So you've got this business process flow at the top, which we found is a really useful tool to have because you're effectively going on that journey from the start of a project until the project has been closed. But between that start and end, there's a lot of information that needs to be captured. So if we click onto here, you can see we've got mandatory fields which need to be uh, filled in before that project can be allowed to move on to the next step, which is planning. So what we've seen here is where the approval workflows can start to come in. So once you have filled in that information and you're then moving it on to the next step, you can then add a, an approval workflow, which will then say, well, actually this, this either project lead or project management team, they need to actually click approve to say they're happy for that to now be put into planning. And you can do that exactly the same for the planning to development stage. So again, tracking that using Power Automate to send those notifications and have that approval process, we can start to, again, capture using model-driven apps. So if we then go on to time entries, what we found is really useful about this is things like HubSpot or Monday.com you can be paying for licenses for these. So again, we're looking at how can we bring all of this in-house for projects using a much cheaper uh, £4.10 license, but also keeping it within the Microsoft stack. 
and then we can start to do cool things like reporting on all of this data using Power BI, which we'll probably touch on uh, in a future video. But for these time entries, you can see we can then start to log time and hours against particular projects. So we could then look for a project that we're currently working on, put that time in, and then it, when it comes to the end of the project, we can say, well, we've we sold 100 hours for this particular project, but actually we spent 120 hours on it. So we can then start to make a note of that, see it in a form of a dashboard using Power BI, look at project profitability, uh, and maybe say, well, actually, next time this project, something you know, a similar project to this is maybe a little bit more complicated than what we first thought. So we can start to maybe increase the hours that we bill for the next one. Things like that. We can then start to add comments, uh, risk level as well. And are we on track or do we want to post it to Teams? So as part of what we do is when a new project is created, we have a development channel on Teams where all new projects have a, a new thread that's created. So if we're maybe off track and there's a high level of risk for that particular project, we might want to say yes. We want to post that to Teams so that everyone can see and keep up to date with what's happening with that particular project. So high level, that's what you can start to do uh, with model driven apps obviously there's a lot more uh, information we can go into in future videos but we thought that might be a, a good starting point for how you can potentially start to utilize the platform a bit more so i just flick back to my other screen there will be a link in the comments section or the description uh, for my contact page where please get in touch let's have a bit of a chat around what you're maybe looking to do maybe what systems you're currently using that you're maybe not utilizing to the full potential and how we can potentially start to mimic and improve the, the process for projects using the Microsoft Power Platform. So thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.